so we're talking today, obviously, as you guys can probably tell um, how recently now I can pull up that little thing, how a DC circuit court overturned an FDA ban on shock devices for disabled students. Now, some of you may know this article um, and this whole thing from about a year, year and a half ago. Um, I uploaded a video about the uh, Judge Rotenberg Center. And I just, I think halfway through the script, uh, I ended up calling them Judge Rottenberg because it's essentially the same thing where essentially um, they partnered with Autism Speaks and we found documented proof of that of Autism Speaks promoting them at events and stuff like that as a way to cure your child of autism, which is a controversial statement in of itself, I believe. So apparently there was a ban that was recently put in place that you can no longer do that. You can no longer use electroshock therapy to shock people who are neurodivergent um, in an attempt to cure them or fix them or whatever. And what this article is kind of the first of the rabbit holes that we're gonna go down is that it got overturned. And it, it is disgusting. A lot of you guys are freaking out right now and you should. This is not okay. I, I think this is absolutely barbaric. I think that medicinally we have grown past a need or a desire to do this to somebody. I think like maybe they thought it was a good idea in their old days maybe, but now in current times, uh, this just isn't viable. Uh, this doesn't make any sense why you would willingly shock your child. And and really as something we discussed previously, this is really only something that helps. Uh, it, it helps parents feel better. It doesn't help kids. Uh, what it does is it's gonna help encourage masking, which is something for many of you that I are either aware of what that is or are autistic in particular, you will know. That masking is generally being able to kind of assume an appearance or acting in a way that would make you seem neurotypical or not being autistic in order to kind of blend in with society better. So if you get, you know, essentially if you're being told that, you know, if you stop acting autistic, you won't get shocked anymore. That doesn't teach you or cure you of your autism. It only said, like teaches you how to hide who you are essentially because you don't wanna get shocked. And who who wants to get shocked? When we went through it earlier, um, let me see if I put it in my sources, but there was a, I think it was from the UN. I know the UN deemed it as actual torture. So the fact that this is being overturned is insane when globally this is not okay. I believe that we read an account in the video, in the episode, there was a child that was shocked over 180 times in a day. And I believe another eight-year-old perhaps, I believe died as a result of this kind of extreme therapy, which is not okay. This is not okay. And the fact that this is being overturned is extra not okay. I don't really know what to say about that, to be honest. It's really, really fucked up is really what it is. This was something I thought was never gonna come to light again. I thought this was banned. I thought this was gonna stop. So seeing this overturned is, I mean, it's only 14 days ago. This article was written July 7th. This is I, I, this is a little shocking trying to process this as we're talking about it because it's it's hard to understand how lawmakers said this was okay. But these are of course similar to the same lawmakers in Texas who of course, as probably some of you know, I believe it's today or yesterday, they uh, overturned an educational policy rule in Texas that says that you no longer have to teach that the KKK or the Ku Klux Klan was bad. You don't have to teach that anymore to kids in Texas, which is horrific. Um, you also don't have to uh, analyze Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech anymore in school, like that got overturned. So honestly, the fact that we're regressing is really not even shocking at this point. It's just disappointing. What are you supposed to say? Yeah, Texas is going fucking backwards. They really are. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this article, okay? So in a two to one opinion, the US Court of Appeals for the DC circuit found that the ban was a regulation of the practice of medicine, which is beyond the FDA's authority. The ruling was a victory for the judge Rotenberg Educational Center and a group of parents and guardians of its students which have challenged the regulation. So the school, which is represented by Michael Flamia of Eckert, Siemens, Charon, and Mellet said in a statement that it was pleased with the ruling, which would allow it to continue to use shock treatment. There's that. That's what I was kind of quoting. I, what are you supposed to say to this? How how am I supposed to be okay with this kind of thing? So essentially what the overturning ruling in this is saying that it's not necessarily that this is right or wrong, but that the FDA had no authority to make that judgment call. I think that's wrong. I, I think this should absolutely stay banned, but it got overturned. So here is from Asan. 
um, A-S-A-N. This is their report, hashtag stop the shock, the Judge Rotenberg Center torture and what we can do to stop it. So let's go over a little bit what this is. So the Judge Rotenberg Center is they have a graduated electronic decelerator, the GED, which is their electric shock device that they have. Here has what some of the things they have electrocuted people for. It's flapping their hands, standing up, swearing, not taking off a coat, noises or movements that they make because of their disability or screaming in pain while being shocked. So you get shocked again for screaming that the shock hurt. Just let that sink in for a moment. And this is what got overturned that it said, this is okay to do now. Yeah, if you scream in pain because you got shocked and that shit hurts, you can get shocked again. And these are past tense things, which means these things have happened. They have shocked somebody for screaming for getting shocked. It's mind boggling. It really is. So it looked like in October, 2018, the FDA said they would release the final rule that would ban devices soon. And it looks like they never finished that. And then as a matter of fact, this gets overturned. I think, I don't think this is okay. I don't think any of you are sitting here going, this is an okay thing to do. Um, The UN, by the way, has deemed it fucking torture. Uh, They were banned. They were banned. Okay. Big letters here. March, 2010, the FDA banned electrical stimulation devices, ESDs, used for self-injurious or aggressive behavior. They knew that these things cause pain and that these things are is modern torture. And on July 6th, the US Court of Appeals for the DC Circuit found that the ban was beyond the FDA's authority and that it was in fact a regulation of the practice of medicine, which is not right. <laughs> That's insane. This is just not something I expected to see. So the JRC Parents Association said they are grateful for the decision, adding that it is a life-saving treatment of last resort. I don't care what you wanna call it. This is not okay. So they go, there is no further treatment for our loved ones and we will not stand by as they are mechanically or chemically restrained, the association said in a statement. The JRC Parents Association is looking forward to allowing their loved ones to receive this life-saving treatment without further governmental interference. When they're saying chemically restrained, by the way, they're talking to taking medication. And when they're saying mechanically restrained, I believe that's something that the JRC also did was they actually physically restrained people during uh, the GED, the electric shock treatment. So it's like, they're like, oh yeah, we're we're against this. And they're literally going to consent to putting their children through this because as many of you are pointing out, if you're above 18, I believe you can say no to this. So it is the Judge Rottenberg Center. Not I know it's the Rotenberg Center or I don't know how, how you pronounce it, but this is not okay. I'm not going to show this, um, but there is a video of a student and they reference it here, screaming and asking them to stop. There is a video of it recorded and it's a very hard video to watch and I I don't really, but the UN, by the way, um, they have called this torture and the the Massachusetts school, that's the that's the JRC. So the UN itself on a, on a global fucking level, this has been condemned. And this you can see the date, June 30th, 2010. This has been 12 years ago. I don't understand why someone would turn this around, you know? This doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. Here's a quote direct from Manfred Nowak, the UN special uh, rapporteur. I don't know how you say that on torture. He said, to be frank, I was shocked when I was reading the report. What I did on the 11th of May was to send an urgent appeal to the US government asking them to investigate. So just know that the rest of the world is apparently on track, but we in the US are, are not quite getting it. Now the Judge Rotenberg Center, they say here, treats enrollees from ages three to adult. So you could be as young as three years old. I, like, obviously I hope they wouldn't use electric shock therapy on anybody, but like, I hope they're especially not using it on someone who's like three. This is horrific. And it doesn't even say just autism for the record. This does say that they treat enrollees, all of whom are struggling with severe emotional, behavioral, or psychiatric problems, including autism-like disorders. And it says apparently here in 2010, there were half of the 250 students undesirable behavior means getting hooked up to a special machine and administered an electric shock. So 250 students, cut that in half, that is at least 125 people, which I guarantee a majority of these people or these children in this center are probably under 18. That's at least 125 kiddos, probably more though, that have been shocked in this center. And the UN global condemnation, this is fucking torture. This is barbaric. And uh, apparently uh, it's back and worse than ever. The fact that there can still be all this awareness and, and understanding about what's going on in our society and how we're understanding, you know, different, uh, different mental disorders, different, you know, physical pains, different whatever. And that this is still 
getting reversed right now in 2021. I don't I don't know how how you're okay with this. So now this came, I believe I quoted this in my actual episode of this. So in a 2007 interview with ABC, Matthew Israel, who's the doctor that was by the way, arrested for torture in the, because of his actions in the center, his own take on the line between therapy and torture, he says, the real torture is what these children are subjected to if they don't have this program. They're drugged up to the gills with drugs that cause them to be so sedated that they essentially sleep all day. That guy, by the way, went to jail, I believe. He, he's probably out of jail. He probably got that shit overturned. This dude that literally charges brought against him for torturing children, that's what he says, is that that's not the real torture. He goes, the real torture is if you don't get electric shocked. Like, <laughs> what? What the fuck? How do you... Uh, mm- I don't know. Also, oh, look, here we go. I said about half the students were gonna be children and here it is confirmation. For about half of Rotenberg students, a mix of adults and children, shock treatment is a regular part of life. Half of the 250 enrollees probably per year get electrocuted and they say a mix of adults and children. I am under the personal impression, it is my opinion, that I believe most of those enrollees are children because I don't know many adults that would willingly subject themselves to electric shock therapy. Because if you can understand what the fuck is gonna happen to you, I don't think you'd willingly put yourself through that. Israel, again, is the doctor, not the country. Um, Israel says that there's no detrimental effects whatsoever. I'm sorry. Like, I, 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 I would also like to be asleep than electroshocked. So here's how they say the treatment works. The treatment works by hooking the students up to electrodes worn on different parts of the body, which communicate with a small device carried around in a backpack or fanny pack. When the student engages in forbidden behavior, a staff member administers a shock. Some students wear the electrodes as much as 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and sometimes for years. Years, years of being electrically shocked. Imagine if you disrespect your parents, right? You didn't get your chores done on time, what fucking ever it might be. And your parents just fucking zap you. Israel says, and I quote, The device is simply a device that administers a two second shock to the surface of the skin that has absolutely no side effects and is extremely effective as a corrective procedure to encourage children to not show violent behavior, not to show self abusive behavior. Something I think we can all say we've learned through time is any sort of physical punishment, any sort of negative reinforcement to a person, to an animal, to whatever you are trying to control because this is a method of control, not a method of of healing, not a method of curing. This is a method of control. What this method of control is saying is that there's, there's no negative effects to this, but we know that negative reinforcement is bad. We know that there are long-term psychological effects. We know there are long-term psychological effects to physical punishment. We know that this is physically affecting you because it is shocking your physical body. Therefore, this is physical punishment. And they just okayed essentially physical abuse again, despite what all the body of science tells us. This doesn't make any sense. So when I was, let's go like a really, really benign kind of example, okay? My dog Casper, and, and many of you have pets as well. When you go to train your pet, you can, you know, do positive reinforcement, which is training with treats right? Training with with rewards for good behavior and just not punishing for bad behavior, but just not giving more affection for bad behavior, which is how I trained Casper. Is when he did a good, he gets treats. When he did a bad, he gets no treats. He, does, he doesn't get fucking zapped. You know what I mean? Then there's the old school style of dog training, which is put the electric shock collar on the dog, right? Or, or give him a bap on the nose, which we've learned dogs' noses are quite sensitive. And, and you train him that way. But what we've learned through science on that is that if you do those things to your dog, it develops a relationship with that dog of fear and that the dog is actually more likely to act out in aggressive behaviors towards you because you yourself are now a scary, intimidating factor. So that's the only type of logic or like the only type of other situation I can think of when I think of electric shock therapy. But now apply that to a person that you're essentially, you know, instead of being like, hey, you did great today. I, I don't fucking know what. Here's your your switch or something, I guess. And then, you know, when when they're bad, you shock them. I, I hope I'm making the comparison. I hope it makes sense. It makes sense in my head. I hope I'm it's translating right when I'm saying it. But to literally hook a child up with a backpack that has their little electroshock device and they have these little nodes all over their body and the kid does something wrong and you go, oh, 
you know, hey, let's not do that again. This is why that was bad. And so you go, mm, zappy time. And you fucking zap the kid. That's not going to tell the kid, oh, what I did was wrong. That's going to say, if I do that again, I get hurt. And it just becomes, how do I avoid hurt versus how do I understand good from bad? That's why I don't understand why this kind of treatment is being celebrated that it's coming back is because it makes zero fucking sense to anybody with at least one brain cell. I'll say two actually, because the one brain cell people probably are the ones who said this was okay. This is insane. There's nothing about this that says it's okay. We know that physically hurting a child does not reinforce good positive behavior in the future. It causes trauma. It causes PTSD. It causes long-term negative psychological effects. I, I think that's the end of the story here. So overturning this is insanity.